Okay, in this video we're going to talk about comparing the values of trig functions by hand. And to do this, there's a bunch of stuff you need to know, which is why I really like these problems. So let's take a look. So the first thing that you need to know is you need to be able to figure out um, if a trig function is positive or negative in a given quadrant. And there's a way that most people remember that. They kind of draw this picture and they put those letters on it. And the A stands for all, so all the trig functions are positive there. The S is for sine and therefore cosecant also are positive in the second quadrant. The T is for tangent and therefore cotangent. So this it's just telling you where uh, the various trig functions are positive and um, the ones that aren't positive are just negative. So we have um, all are positive, then sine, then tangent, then cosine. So that's the first thing. The next thing we need to know about are reference angles and how to find them. So uh, this varies by quadrant, so let's go through the four quadrants. In the first quadrant, we have our angle theta, we have our reference angle, which I'm gonna call alpha, and in this quadrant, alpha is just equal to theta, so that's the easiest quadrant to deal with. Uh, let's move to the second quadrant. So we have our angle theta, we have our reference angle alpha, and for this quadrant, to calculate alpha, we're gonna do pi minus theta, or if you're working in uh, degrees, which mostly we will be in these problems, it's 180 degrees minus theta. So now we wanna go into the third quadrant. So theta goes all the way from the positive x-axis, um, and then alpha is this angle right here, and to calculate that, we're gonna do theta minus pi, or um, for these particular problems, we're gonna do theta minus 180 degrees. And then finally, we'll move into the fourth quadrant where theta goes all the way around. Alpha is just here. So to calculate that, we can do two pi minus theta or we can do um, 360 degrees minus theta. All right, so those are the first two things you need to know. There's a couple more. So co-function identities are gonna be crucial. So the first, is that sine is equal to cosine of 90 minus theta. So sine of theta equals cosine of 90 minus theta. Or we could use the fact that cosine of theta equals sine of 90 minus theta. Either one will work. It just depends on what function you want to compare. Uh, a fourth thing that we definitely need to know, um, the quadrant one properties of sine and cosine. So I'll just full disclosure tell you, I pretty much only use sine. Um, I don't know why, I just always have. So in the first quadrant, we know that sine increases. So that means that the sine of a larger angle in the first quadrant is bigger than the sine of a smaller angle. So the sine of, I don't know, uh, 35 is bigger than the sine of one because sine increases as you move through that quadrant. Uh, cosine on the other hand decreases. So if you're gonna use cosine, just remember that the values of the cosines decrease as the angle increases. And then a fifth thing that we need there's actually a sixth thing that you need, but um, I forgot to write it, so I'm just gonna tell you at the end. Uh, the properties of inequalities are the fifth thing that you need, and these you don't use all that much, um, I would say, in trig, but they come up in these problems a lot. So if x is greater than y, then uh, negative x is less than negative y. So that's where if you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip the inequality. And then a second property that we need is if x is greater than y, then uh, one over x, is less than one over y. So if you take reciprocals, you also switch the sign. All right, the sixth thing that we need is um, the reciprocal identities, right? So cosecant is one over sine, secant is one over cosine. Um, I'm not gonna do any tangent problems, but cotangent is one over tangent. And now I'm just gonna do a bunch of examples. So I'm gonna start easy and then get a little more complicated. Uh, so let's take a look at the first. So we wanna compare the sine of 70 to the cosine of 18. I don't like working with cosine, so I'm gonna to choose to change the cosine into sine. So I'm gonna say that the cosine of 18 degrees, so 18 degrees is in the first quadrant, so I can just, uh, the reference angle would be the same, so I'm just gonna use the co-function identity. So the cosine of 18 degrees is the same as the sine of 90 minus 18 degrees. And then we do the arithmetic, so that's the sine of 72 degrees. So now what I wanna do is make sure I'm fully answering the question. So since they're first quadrant angles, I know the sine of 72 degrees, definitely bigger than the sine of 70 degrees. And since I said the sine of 72 is the same as the cosine of 18, I'm gonna make that substitution. So I'm gonna say, therefore, 
cosine of 18 is greater than the sine of 70? And we answered the question. We uh, decided the relationship between them. Let's take a look at another one that's a little more complicated. So we have the sine of 117 degrees compared to the cosine of 294 degrees. So the first thing we want to do here is look at the quadrant in which the angle falls. So 117 degrees is in quadrant two. And I know in quadrant two, signs are positive. So that's going to be really important. So I know the sine of 117 degrees is a positive number. Um, same thing here for 294. So 294 is in the fourth quadrant. Um, also knowing the quadrant tells me how I'm going to calculate the reference angle. So I'm in the fourth quadrant. I know that cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. If one of these was positive and the other one was negative, we'd actually be done. So you're not going to see that very often, but you might, you never know. Um, okay, so let's, let's deal with this. So sine of 117, my goal is to get first quadrant angles. So I'm going to get the reference angle here. So second quadrant, you do 180 minus the angle. So that's going to be the same as the sine of 180 minus the angle. Do the arithmetic on that. We get the sine of 63 degrees. All right, so we're going to stop on that and we're going to move to the cosine of 294. So 294, we said is in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, to get a reference angle, we do 360 minus the angle. So this is going to be the same as the cosine of 360 minus 294. And then arithmetic cosine of 66. Now I want to compare the same trig function. So I'm going to change this cosine into a sine because I just prefer to use sine. So this is the sine of 90 minus 66, which is the same as the sine of 24. All right, and now all I need to do is make my comparisons. So I know that sine of 63 is bigger than the sine of 24 because in the first quadrant, if the angle is bigger, the sine is bigger. And then I know that the, um, I, I said sine of 63 is the same as the sine of 117, so I'm going to substitute that. Sine of 24 is the same as cosine of 294, so I'm going to substitute that, and I'm going to say, therefore, the sine of 117 is greater than the cosine of 294. One of the things I see my students do a lot is they don't actually answer the question. They do like all this work. They get down to the prior relationship, and they just stop. You, you want to really make sure you answer the question. Let's look at another question that's a little bit harder. So we have the sine of 268 degrees versus the cosine of 163 degrees. So let's do the same thing. So all these problems are basically the same. So 268 is in quadrant three. I know that sine is negative in quadrant three, so that's gonna add a little wrinkle to this problem. And uh, 163 is in quadrant two, and I know that cosine is negative in quadrant two. All right, so they're both negative, so let's deal with this. So we wanna get into the first quadrant. So I'm gonna start with the sine of 268. In the third quadrant, I do the angle minus 180. So it's gonna be equal to, but we said negative, so put the negative sign in. So it's the negative of the sine of um, the angle minus 180. And then that negative sign is just gonna hang around. So that's gonna be equal to the negative of the sine of 88. And that's a first quadrant angle, so I'm gonna stop there and move over to the cosine. So the cosine of 163, we know uh, that this is a negative value, so I'm gonna say this is the negative of the cosine of, in the second quadrant, you do 180 minus the angle. So we get this. So the negative sign stays, cosine of 17. I'm gonna change my cosine into a sine, because that's how I always deal with this. So that's the negative of the sine of 90 minus 17, which is the negative of the sine of 73. Okay, so we got two first quadrant angles. Now what I do is I look at the absolute values of these things. So I'm gonna say the sine of 88 is definitely bigger than the sine of 73. And now it's properties of inequalities. So I'm gonna multiply through by a negative, which flips the inequality. So the negative sine of 88 is less than the negative sine of 73. And now I'm just gonna do direct substitution, right? So the negative sine of 88 is the sine of 268. The negative sine of 73 is the cosine of 163. So we can write our answer. So here we go. And we got our relationship. All right, let's take a look at another problem, which is a little more complicated. Actually, maybe not. 
uh, let's see. So we have the cosecant of 58 degrees versus the secant of 314. So what's kind of nice is 58 degrees is in the first quadrant. So I know everything is positive there. And 314 is in the fourth quadrant. And cosine is positive there, so secant is positive. So we're comparing two positive values. So that's good. Um, I'm just going to start with the reciprocal identity. So cosecant of 58 is going to be 1 over the sine of 58. 58 degrees is already in the first quadrant, so I'm going to stop on that. Let's take care of the secant thing. So secant of 314, use the reciprocal identity, is going to be 1 over the cosine of 314. And now let's work on cosine of 314. So cosine of 314, we know it's positive. It's a fourth quadrant angle, so it's going to be the cosine of 360 minus 314. So we have this. Just do the arithmetic. So we have the cosine of 46. Now that's a cosine. I'm going to change it to a sine by using the co-function identity. So that's the sine of 90 minus 46. And then that is the sine of 44. And so now what I want to do is start my inequalities. So I'm going to compare the sine of 58 and the sine of 44. Um, but I'm doing that because I showed cosine of 314 is sine of 44. So actually, let's go up and write this. Um, so the secant of 314 is the same as 1 over the sine of 44. Now let's do our inequalities. Sine of 58, definitely bigger than the sine of 44. So we'll use the property of inequalities where if we take reciprocals, it changes the sign. The inequality, I should say. Flips the inequality, I guess is what people say. So we flip the inequality. And now we're going to do our direct substitution. And we'll be done. We will have compared the actual original first value to the actual original second value. And we've got our relationship. Uh, let's take a look at one more. So this is the most complicated one that we're going to do. Um, so we're comparing the cosecant of 194 to the secant of 259. Start off by looking at what quadrants you're in. So 194 is quadrant 3. And I know that sine is negative there, and therefore cosecant is also. But I, what I'm really thinking is that tangent is positive and everything else is negative. Um, and then 259 is also in quadrant 3, so by the same logic, this must be negative. All right, so start with cosecant. Cosecant 194. Uh, first things first, I'm going to use the reciprocal identity. So we got, that's 1 over the sine of 194. Um, and now let's deal with 194. So 194 quadrant 3, so the sine of 194 is, we said negative, right, because it's in the third quadrant, so negative sine of 194 minus 180. So now you're just throwing everything together that we've been talking about, and that's the negative of the sine of 14. And we'll stop there because it's in quadrant 1. Secant, or we'll rewrite this. I actually write this out ahead of time and then I forget what I wrote, so that's why that happens sometimes. All right, let's look at secant of 259. Secant of 259, step one, reciprocal identity. So one over the cosine of 259. Um, now let's deal with cosine of 259. So third quadrant, so we're gonna pick up a negative because cosine is negative there. And then it's gonna be negative cosine of 259 minus 180. And then we do the math on that. We get the negative cosine of 79. I want to compare sine to sine, so I'm going to use the co-function identity. Negative sine of 90 minus 79, which is the negative of the sine of 11. So now I want to compare things. Uh, let's go back and rewrite secant of 259, though. Secant of 259 is 1 over the cosine of 259, which we now know is negative 1 over the sine of 11. Okay, so compare sine of 14 and sine of 11. Sine of 14, I know, is definitely bigger than the sine of 11. It's kind of interesting that you never actually know the value of any of these things. You just know the relationship between them. I kind of like that. Um, all right, reciprocals, because we want to take reciprocals. We could have actually uh, taken the negative of everything there. It wouldn't have changed the answer. It's just the order in which you do it. So we flip the inequality by taking reciprocals. We're going to multiply through by a negative, which flips the inequality again. So we have a double flip here. So it's going to go back to greater than. 
And now we're just gonna go back and substitute, right? Negative one over sine of 14 is the cosecant of 194. Negative one over sine of 11 is the secant of 259. And we did it. All right, so that's a bunch of examples. There's a lot of stuff you need to know. These are really good practice problems. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.